one is bolted, it's uh, rolling with four dollars squish craft. Um, just stowed it out at the park here with the dog. Uh, our job got pushed back for uh, about another week, so I go up, uh, I go back up north to Pukkawagan on Sunday after, Sunday morning. So I figured I'd come out and spend some time with the pooch. He's back there eating some some breakfast there, some kibble. But uh, working up north, I've um, not so much changed the decisions on knives, but from what needs that I have, there's, uh, there's a little bit different realm. Uh, I had picked up an uh, Ontario SP50. Um, up there, tend to do a lot of uh, a lot of chopping and stuff in the winter time for you know cutting sticks and whatnot for marking blasting holes and you know lail poles and, and all that kind of stuff. Not to mention fire prep and stuff. If we want to have like a hot lunch or something. You know, I mean, you got other resources that are available, but you know, that's kind of what we tend to do. It's just usually faster, but. Uh, the Ontario SP50 was a little bit on the large side for, for what I wanted. Um, then I decided, well, you know, I still want a larger fixed blade, but something a little bit lighter to carry around on the hip all day. Um, so I got an Ontario uh, SP42. Excellent, excellent knife. Got absolutely nothing bad to say about it. Squared the spine off on it. Uh, I'll probably do a review on that the next time I'm back. I haven't really had any time, so I'm not really going to do a whole lot of reviewing today, but uh, the SP42 is a little bit on the light side. It did everything that I kind of needed, except for basically light chopping. Um, so over the years, um, I've gone through all the different types of knives. I carry, carry a Mora at work daily. Uh, just a basic more companion, 20 bucks, and does a lot of a lot of work. Um, even some of the heavier work when I didn't have a heavy knife on me, I got no qualms about batoning it. You know, to cut down saplings and whatnot for layout poles, it's not an issue. But it requires a little bit more work than what I'm what I'm needing to put into it. Sometimes I'll have a folding saw up there with me. Not a big deal, you know. Makes uh, cutting poles pretty quick and simple. Um, don't carry an axe throughout the summer up there. Winter time, we'll have an axe in the truck and whatnot. Especially if we're commuting back and forth on the winter roads, and will catch me dead in the forest up up north in Man northern Manitoba road an axe in the winter time. That's that's for sure. But uh, what I did pick up and did it for a couple of reasons. One, there's been a ton of reviews on this knife over the years. Um, some good, some bad. People like to either love it or hate it. And no, it's not a tracker. <laughs> I've done a review on the on the top Tom Brown tracker before. That's not it. But uh, there's lots of clones out on the market of it. And uh, I am planning on picking up one of the clones. I had one years ago and it was it was absolutely fine um, for what I needed. And uh, But I've never been able to do a side-by-side -side comparison of the two. So I've got another clone on order and I just ordered through Marway Militaria, thanks Jamie again, um, a Cold Steel Trailmaster. Now the Trailmaster has gone through a multitude of different steels over the years. Um, the original was in their Carbon V. Uh, never had the opportunity to use that knife. Um, there's a smaller version called the Recon Scout, which is a little bit shorter and more kind of stocky in my opinion. I owned one of those for quite a few years in Carbon V. Great knife. Um, geometry is a little on the thick side for doing any kind of fine, fine work. Um, but years ago I had a friend that had a Carbon V Trailmaster and uh, he swore by that knife up and down. Uh, at that time I had a Gerber BMF and we kind of did a 
a side-by-side -side use uh, way back when I was a young man. <laughs> I'm not so young no more. And way before I got into heavy bushcraft and, and survival, uh, I was still climbing. Back in those days, I was climbing, rock climbing, mountaineering, you name it. Um, and I always carried a large knife on my pack. And a lot of people used to ask me why, and I'm like, well, because if I need it, it's there, right? It doesn't always have to be on your hip. Sometimes a pack knife is, is great, and having a smaller knife on your hip is, is the ticket. Everything about knives, guys, is completely situational dependent. The best survival knife, obviously, the one you have with you. There's no contesting that. It doesn't matter who you are. If you've got no knife, and I hand you a butter knife, you're going to think I'm basically God because I just gave you a cutting tool. Whether you got to sharpen it on a piece of cinder block or a rock or what, no, what have you, a knife is a knife. They cut stuff. Anything beyond that is personal preference, steel choices, environmental choices, summertime, spring, fall. I don't like carrying an axe or a tomahawk around all that much, unless I'm going to be doing very specific things, especially in a fixed camp or, or in a lightweight modular camp, I'll carry a, carry a hawk or a hatchet or, you know, small axe back axe. But a larger knife and a small knife as a pair make a lot of sense. Now the review that I'm going to do eventually, this is not going to be a review, we're just going to play with this thing today because I only got it yesterday, is the new Cold Steel Trail Master in 01 Tool Steel. I've got a couple of knives in 01 Actually, I should say I've had a couple of knives in 01. I still have one. I got an Enzo. Now, one reason I like this knife is got a lot to do with the shape. It's a traditional Bowie size shape. Uh, I like the fact that it has the Craton style handle, so it provides a good grip. It's got a little bit of class to it got the brass bolster and the fact that it's mirror polished and not coated in paint for the lack of a better term most of my knives aside of my Ontario SP 42 uh, that I'll do a video on later and my Ontario Rat 7 that I've had for years I've stripped the paint off um, don't have a whole lot of use for coatings on knives so yeah anyway like the fact that this uh, is a little bit nicer option than their SK5 model which was like black epoxy powder coat whatever you want to call it didn't care so much for that my recon scout I stripped and blued um, this one I'll probably leave in satin I like the finish of it um, so far, the overall fit and finish on the knife is good. Um, the only thing that bothers me a little bit, and this is true with a lot of companies, is the fact that they started their roots out making really, really good knives. The downside is somewhere along the line, product demand and production eventually can't keep up and you're going to end up having to sacrifice and what a lot of knives knife companies have done is they farm stuff out to China, Taiwan, wherever wherever they can get stuff manufactured now having said that a lot of guys got to hate on for Chinese knives whatever Let's go. Stick that in the log for now. Yeah, we're going to lean on my stump. A lot of guys got a hate on for anything made in Taiwan. Okay. Well, we're going to dispel this little myth right now because, oh, if it's not made in the USA or if it's not made in Sweden or if it's not made here, made there. Okay. Steel is steel. 